today's show. It's a visit with a person of high strangeness. Today we have two people of high strangeness. This is Dan. How are you, Dan? Hey, Lillian. And you've been, uh, how long have we interacted here? A um, few years, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've known you, uh, you what, five years? Some oh, no, 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 more than that. that. More than mm -hmm. that. Uh, because we have a couple, yeah, 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 a couple mutual friends. Prophet Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Both know him, yeah. So, in, in a, indirectly, we've been trying to do this for a long time, so. Yeah. And uh, the opening shot was uh, bamboo. It's for good luck. Yeah. Those are, those are really cool. How fast do they grow? I'm not really sure. I screwed them up a little bit because uh, I didn't put enough water in it. So somebody said once they turn this color, they're all gone short, fairly shortly. So we, we just mm -hmm. immortalized them. How's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell me a little bit. Uh, uh, I understand you have shows. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing uh, shows uh, on the public access channel now for about 11 years now. All together. Good. I started doing them uh, right around 2000 and uh, uh, I didn't just do one kind of show. I did mm -hmm. I did the mental health news hour. I did a bunch of single like single series with 12 episodes or six episodes in it all together or 12. Uh, just depended. There were mental health based. Um, I did uh, some silly single one runs. Uh, I've done animated, little animated shorts that are 10 minutes long. Um, I did, oh God. Uh, oh God, <laughs> oh God's right. Uh, uh, speaking of that, how long does it take to do an animated, do you know? Oh, a long time. A long time, yeah, long I know, time. hey, I know. I, I was I gonna say, it, huh? I, I can't, I lost count of how many ones that I did with Prophet Atlantis. He and I did so many. We did half hour shows, we did full hour shows. But the animated shorts, uh, for instance, uh, the insert that uh, that you're gonna throw in. Yeah, we're um, gonna show you an insert here in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, I had to write the script, mm -hmm. create the storyboard, build the models, build the set, film it, because that whole thing was uh, stop motion. You move it, Take a picture. Click, I've tried it, that. Yeah. Click, just... move it, and you need uh, you, you need a huge amount of patience, yeah. and you have to ha kind of Don't have a have sense it. of what you're doing because if you're moving two or three things around at one time, mm -hmm. like there was another animated short that I did that's uh, uh, um, and you may see it later. Um, I have a whole bunch of little army men. Yeah, I, I, I saw it online, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of little army men, and so you have to remember where all these guys were, and all those guys were. I sort of understand <clears> that, <throat> because when I go on the road, I do in-camera editing, like I have a general storyline I want to do, yeah. and then then I'll have to remember what I said uh, <coughs> two days ago, you know what I mean? And, and so it's a little... But anyway, um, we're going to show you an insight here in a little bit, but what happens, what I want to, uh, I want to talk about Dan, the person, for a minute. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I um, grew up in a large family. Mm -hmm. I escaped from the Mormon church. Mm -hmm. And when I say escape, mm -hmm. I mean escape. <laughs> I, I left everything. And... Uh, I was married for 10 years or so, mm -hmm. and uh, she had two kids already, mm -hmm. and I still I still have some contact with them, and uh, uh, they, they both moved uh, ways away, so I don't talk to them very much. Mm -hmm. um, then I uh, got divorced, mm -hmm. and... Uh, Change in light. Our sensor light just went out. So we're sitting in the dark, but that's okay. So he got divorced and... Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. got divorced. Uh, right on cue, you notice that I got divorced. Lights <laughs> out. <laughs> Bling. Yeah. yeah, so so I got divorced and uh, um, it was right around that time that I started getting involved in mental health. In the mental mm -hmm. health, uh, um, there's a, a place called the Capital Clubhouse 
and um, it was a drop-in center for people with mental illnesses. And then um, I got more and more and more involved until I was the director for three years. I, I ran the place for three years, and then um, I got fired a lot. I, I had a, a nasty, nasty disagreement with with the board members, and uh, uh, I behaved badly. They behaved badly, and we parted ways in uh, not not good terms. Um, but I still, I still had this really important need to uh, enlighten people. Yeah, with mental illness. I uh, um, in ninety seven. Uh, 96, 96, I, I couldn't remember, I, I uh, met uh, another uh, sweet woman and I was with her for 12 years and she passed away uh, a couple of years ago and uh, she had bipolar. Mm -hmm. So uh, she went through some awful, awful times and uh, part of the reason I started doing the mental health news was to indirectly help her mm -hmm. uh, by educating others about everything mental illness uh, because people people they they they're you know you say mental illness and they get real nervous you know you say mm -hmm. schizophrenia and they and they expect the person is going to just snap you know yeah. but it doesn't work that it way it doesn't work like that well i'm gonna get back to what you said here for a minute sure um i think most of us uh have a calling to educate uh or, or something but if we wasn't experiencing these things ourselves, we couldn't do that because it doesn't come out of a book. No, no, it comes with empathy. Yeah. You have to have a, a good deal of empathy to be able to, to, to speak and have some passion about it. And because mm -hmm. you know you're you're speaking not just about yourself, you're speaking about friends and loved ones and family members. But you know you have a little bit of insight and a little bit of empathy mm -hmm. and. The, the and when we speak up, when we speak about ourselves, look how you see how we're leaning. That we have done this on purpose, by the way, because uh, we don't want to be straight, you know, like straight and proper and all of that. <laughs> there, there, there is there is a lot of logic and madness, you know. Yes, and besides, my middle name is Eileen. I <laughs> is it? No. <laughs> okay. No. Um. So so in, if we help one person, just one person. We did good, huh? Yeah. 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 Y you get feedback? Actually, yes. Um, the weird thing is, is uh, I will be in the grocery store or yeah. shopping center or the mall or somewhere. People, and, yeah. Yeah, and people will recognize me. Yeah, same, and, same. And yeah. they'll say hi. And 99% uh, of the response is favorable. Yeah. The responses that I've got that are unfavorable are people that are in the mental health <laughs> business. <laughs> um, and not all of them. There's only been a couple of them. And uh, they, they, because I'm not devout uh, uh, supporter of medication, mm -hmm. uh, many, many medications, uh, they're crap. And they don't work. But they give them to people anyway. And they cause them health problems, and they cause them um, uh, all kinds of different problems. And they give them to them anyway. And they're expensive, and Medicaid pays millions and millions and millions of dollars yeah. on these medications for people that don't work well. You think about it, a person with bipolar, they go up and they go down, they go up and they go down. Well, that's one kind of bipolar, okay? They give them medication, they go up and they go down. They go up and they go down. They their periods of up and down might be a little bit longer. They yeah. they stretch out their their good periods a little bit, but but really they're they're taking this medication that doesn't appear to be all that helpful. It's not 100 percent effective at all. It's maybe I don't know not very much. People with schizophrenia they will take their medications that are very expensive, but they end up still hearing stuff and thinking stuff and and, and doing stuff that's um, as if the medication is not working so and they're very expensive so 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 there's a lot of um, I have a lot of complaints about mm -hmm. medications and people people in 
professionals in the mental health community, um, you know, they make their living on dispensing pills and giving people medication. And it's very medication centered. And so, you know, they would have a natural objection because, you know, if I'm telling regular people, listen, <laughs> if your meds aren't working, don't take them. Don't take them, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah they, so they don't want you to do that. Now, uh, now um, I have somewhat of a unique, uh, unique, actually, hard to deal with uh, affliction. I have what used to be called MPD, multiple personality disorder. Some kind of way they call it something else now. But medication doesn't help. Um, no, no. It, it, because you have to train, you have to train. It's You get up in the morning and it's a struggle trying to maintain. And then eventually we found out um, the reason we get along so well is because there's so many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So combined with the two of us is how many are yeah. uh, there? I tell people that I am highly dissociative. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I don't. Don't, really I don't. I don't give them a label. I don't mm -hmm. give them. I don't. I don't. I don't tell them. You know. I really. Uh, I don't know if I'm guarded about it, but I. I just generally. Um, I tell them that I'm highly dissociative, and if they want to learn more, if they're curious, if they're not sure what that means, uh, they want to do a little bit of their own research and come back and ask me more. I'll. I'll share a lot more of it. Um, but, but you know, that's a really, uh, I don't talk about mine too often. Yeah, me neither. Um, yeah, and, and, and I think a lot of people, they don't want to appear dumb, so they're not going to ask you. Right. But the only but the only place I had to bring it to, they had to put a label on it, is poor Bernie, my director, you know. Yeah. Because I had to work with him all the time. And so I made him aware of it, and uh, uh, because he could, he could tell when I made my switch there, and he would just adopt to who I was at the moment, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, because, uh, ha have you found that once people know, they play on that and want to deliberately take you somewhere else? A few people, not many. Not many. Most, uh, um, most people are curious and uh, uh, fascinated. Mm -hmm. Most people, they're they're fascinated. Uh, I've got I've got one friend that says I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. It's like whatever. Whatever. It's yeah. It's like whatever. It's a you know she. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It, uh, it. What matters is what I experience, and if people don't see it, or if it's not immediately obvious, then it doesn't matter. Um, I wrote an article a few years ago. Um, well, basically, let me um, let me summarize from my perspective. What happens is, due to trauma or, well, trauma or mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's why we escape. Um, the the instinct the instinct survival button kicks in and it disassociates your mind from what happens to you physically and you split and then it's like you permanent permanently this you create these um you create these uh like files in your head so when when you're hurting over here you go over here and you're pain free even though you can't move over here right and <coughs> and so then then as time goes on uh, sometimes we don't realize that we had the survival instinct where we created these different compartments and these different people that all look like us. And uh, so when I end up having an episode like that, uh, it's like somebody standing behind me with a channel surfer and click and I'm looking at something and okay. And just as I'm starting to grasp what I'm looking at, they switch the channel again, and you just get, I call it, you get scrambled. Mm -hmm. At which time, I can't have anybody say, well, what's wrong, or touch me. Because mm -hmm. then I, I can't maneuver from my angle. And so when I get like that, people need to leave me alone. And so what happens to you? Um, typically, uh, uh, with with me, it's a uh, situational kind of depends on the situation. What's going on? Mm -hmm. um, some parts of me, 
are uh, much much more serious and much mm -hmm. more uh, much more uh, scientific kind of minded and uh, other parts of me are goofballs complete goofballs and uh, and then other parts of me play with toys or quite young quite young yeah you, yeah. Uh, yeah, you mentioned uh, you mentioned earlier that you have somebody that drives yeah well I don't any Anything under 16, I, I'm done. I can't go nowhere because uh, I don't know how to drive. No, if he, he drives. He, he does the driving. And what's funny is uh, <clears throat> I will be having a conversation with someone in the car mm -hmm. and I will just go. Leave. And we'll, end up, we'll end up somewhere. And they're like, why are you going this way? And it's like, oh. <laughs> uh, oh, apparently uh, some part of me Needed to go somewhere else. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. It, 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 yeah. you know, I, I sometimes I wonder. Um, I, I'm stuttering. I normally don't stutter either, but yes, I do. But no. But here's the thing. It's like we live in these simultaneous. That's what it is. You live simultaneously, and that's why we get so much done, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's kind of interesting. Um, I've known people that, you know, are artists, but they don't, they, you know, they take a long time doing a thing, mm -hmm. you know, and they only do one thing at a time. <laughs> Me, I've got, I've got five projects I'm doing all at the same time, and they won't be completed at the same time, but, uh, but they're equally interesting because, you know, I, I lose interest in this particular project for a brief period of time, and another part of me is very interested in doing something else. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, painting or doing video or or uh, doing some photography little project I got going or uh, <laughs> watching a movie or illustrating some stuff or the the, the term a jack of all trade. Do you think that that's how that started? You know, I wonder. I wonder if that isn't uh, if that isn't. You know, I've been referred to as a Renaissance man because I do a lot of science mm -hmm. and I do a lot of art. But a Renaissance man was also, their science and art and philosophy and uh, a, a, a bunch of different things. But I don't know if that term applies as well. I think jack of all trades is probably more, more of a, you know, a multitasker. A multitasker, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so I think we're gonna put a, so you get an idea of what Dan's talking about. Um, we're going to put this clip here now, and uh, so you can get an idea yeah. uh, of some mm -hmm. of the wonderful things he he does. The the clip is uh, called Green Bean Gets an Advanced Directive, and it's a mental health oriented thing. And I created it while I was at Evergreen. Mm -hmm. So, so and it took me <laughs> took me about two months all together to make it. I worked uh, quite, a, quite, a, quite a bit on that thing. You know, this show goes to a lot of places within the country and uh, we're always laughing because uh, we kind of put the Evergreen College on the map because we always have people from Evergreen, you know. Yeah. So, so here's another facet of Evergreen. We just hang in here. Insert and then we'll be right back. This is Green Bean. Green Bean has a mental illness. Mental illness is caused by genetic factors compounded by environmental triggers and exacerbated by stressors. Green Bean is looking calm and relaxed. A little too calm and relaxed, perhaps. Say, Green Bean, what are you up to? I'm so tired and dizzy and thirsty and my heart races and I have to pee every 10 minutes and... Whoa there, Green Bean. Just what medications are you taking, anyway? Um, Mutomatic, and Tranquilump, and Crazebegone, and Flattendall, and... Gosh, Green Bean, no wonder you can't function. Say, how did all this happen? I was writing a manifesto that would save mankind. I thought I was receiving thoughts from all the super scientists around the world. I thought that when I made everyone read it, they would understand each other perfectly and the world would be saved from imminent doom. Why, you were acutely manic and hallucinating. 
you were having a doozy of a time distinguishing reality and were severely lacking in critical insight that you needed to function. Gee whiz, I sure was. It's a good thing my friends made an intervention phone call. I don't know how long all that would have lasted. Golly, Green Bean. How long were you involuntarily detained in the hospital psychiatric wing? Oh, for months. I lost most of my rights and freedoms and had no control over what happened to me. I saw a psychiatrist that gave me a lot of medications. The doctor finally offered a treatment that he said might cure me or at least help me go home sooner. It's called electroconvulsive therapy. Golly, at that point, I was willing to sign anything to get out of there. After a month of shock treatment, he discharged me, prescribed more medications, and wished me good luck. Say, I have an idea. Have you ever heard of a mental health advance directive? No, what's that? Well, Green Bean, it's a document that you can create yourself that tells the hospital staff how you want to be treated. Like what medications help and which ones don't, and whether or not you want more shock treatment, things like that. Oh golly, that shock treatment was awful. It didn't help and they kept telling me I needed more treatments and more medication. You know, Green Bean, that is exactly why an advanced directive is so important. It speaks for you when you're not doing so well. Say, would you like to fill one out? Yeah. Well, first you need an introduction page with a title that looks something like this. Next you will need a table of contents listing the main sections of your advanced directive. The first section is your address and phone number. Section 2 says when your advanced directive becomes active. Section 3 tells them how long it is good for. Section 4 defines when and where you cancel your directive. Section 5 states who has copies of your directive. This should be people you trust or someone like an advocate or your case manager. Section 6 tells the hospital staff who to contact in case of emergency. Section 7 is your crisis plan. It's critical for you to describe what hospital staff should do when you are freaked out or really suicidal. It might help you avoid being tackled by a 200-pound gorilla with pepper spray. Section 8 tells the doctors what you have been diagnosed with, which is good because the doctor can get a sense of your history. Section 9 tells the doctor what medications or supplements you are currently taking. This is critical since many medications and herbal remedies can strongly interact with other medications. So list them all. Section 10 tells the doctor what medications you've taken at one time or another in the past. He or she can get a better understanding of what worked for you and what didn't. Section 11 specifies what medications that you refuse to take. You should list the reasons why, whether it's an allergy or unbearable side effects. And you shouldn't use this area to eliminate the possibility of trying something new that might really be helpful. Section 12 asks about current medical conditions. It's important to list any other diagnoses you might have because they definitely affect your mental health. Section 13 asks about electroconvulsive therapy. You should be very clear about your wishes on this subject. Section 14 is the area where you list your current health care providers. Section 15 tells the hospital staff who is not helpful or safe to contact. Section 16 tells them who should not be visiting. Even well-intentioned people can cause harm when you are vulnerable. Section 17 will tell a mental health official which hospitals or treatment agencies can help you and which ones don't.
Section 18 says what people to notify immediately. It's good for the hospital staff to know that friends and family will be there for you. Section 19 identifies children or pets that may suffer due to your absence. You should have a plan that deals with that sort of thing. Section 20 is the section where you can add anything that you think is relevant, which couldn't be said elsewhere. Section 21 is the formal legal statement that talks about guardianship, blank spots, and revocations, and has your signature. Section 22 is the witness signature spot. Find people that are not close relatives, lovers, or direct caregivers for best results. Section 23 is where your case manager, counselor, or therapist reads and signs, with a little room for commentary. Section 24 is the place where your doctor signs, attesting to your competency to create the advanced directive in the first place. If your doctor recommends changes, you should seriously consider them. Section 25 is the last section, where you have the option of revoking the whole thing if you ever decide it's necessary. So what do I do with this now? Well, Green Bean, first you find a couple of other people you really trust and have them look at it so they can make suggestions for improving it. Then you have them sign it. Then make copies for your counselor and doctor and anyone else you trust so they can make sure it gets to the hospital, if you ever go back. Gee whiz, you were a big help. Thanks a lot. Well, Green Bean, just doing my job. So just remember, if you want to have a say in your mental health decisions, get yourself an advanced directive. It might be the most important decision you'll ever make. So where were Ask we? Ask your question, Wendy. What's a polymorphism? Well, Morphism. poly means many, <laughs> morph means to change, and ism is about political... Communisms. Yes, that's Evil. exactly what it is. So Capitalism. many, cha many changing communisms. No. 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 Huh. So polycommunisms. I think your thought went astray. Yeah, it what? did. Okay. Okay, polymorphisms, what this article talks about is, is you'll have a gene sequence mm -hmm. and there, there is a, a, a section of the gene that's slightly different. Yep. And it'll be a section of the gene where there's a little change here, here, and here in the yep, gene. Yep, yep, yep. And that codes for a specific protein. And yep. some people have these polymorphisms or they have these variations. And the variations are usually a uh, cause for disease. Are those Ooh. codes swear words? Uh-huh. Are they able to be said on the word ear? Maybe. Well, if they're really bad swear word, then I'll just beep them out with a car horn or a uh, something. Do you wash your socks, mouths no. out with soap? I do, and their their back ends where the hands go up. Real bad. Uh, is that why I don't remember it? Do I have PTSD? Yeah, you well see what happens when you get washed. It washes out your brain too. Ooh. So it's brainwashing. That's the yeah. lint that's. <gasps> Um, okay, anyway, back okay. to polymorphisms. Polymorphisms are variations in genes that can result in changes in the way a particular gene functions, which may affect the expression, thank you, uh, of a disease. Scientists study the effect of specific polymorphisms on how fear is learned and how this fear is subsequently overcome. 
they looked at two genes that may intensify anxiety disorders. Is that the Levi's okay. genes or the... the uh, what? Oh, oh. Now you have to pay Levi's for this commercial sign. Yeah, I do. Well, I'll pay um, Wrangler. Because I got me some uh, Wrangler. See, now you have to pay Levi's. Oh, I got me some Wrangler. They're going to... Do you, dark, Daddy? Dark, dark. Hey, where were you? The serotonin, okay, one of these genes that they've been looking at is a serotonin transporter gene with mm -hmm. a variant that leads to less serotonin clearance. Mm. Okay, and what happens is serotonin is, uh, is active. Well, it helps your mood be improved. And if it's not being cleared up, then it'll just float around and not do anything. Hmm. And so that will cause, that will affect your mood. Is it? Break. Okay, there we go. Another spinning entry. Woo! Okay, story problem number 120. If you watch TV, everyone is between the age of 18 and 39. Everyone appears to be in, in their prime. Choose from the following which method has consistently been the most successful at keeping everyone in their prime, or at least their appearance. A. Thick, wrinkle-filling, sculpting makeup. B. Regimented camera angles. C. Excellent computer enhancement software. D. Excruciatingly exact lighting. E. Slightly out of focus shots for the few close-ups that are allowed. F. Subliminal hypnotism wheel shots splice in, in your TV show randomly into frames and, uh, and uh, these uh, subliminal messages suggest the perfect body size and shape that you must have. And gee, all of the above. Well. Finally, uh, I smoke a cigarette right about now, but maybe we won't do that today. So we're done with the clip, and uh, you had a whole bunch of them, right? Uh, what day does your show come on? Let's go that way. Well, I stopped, um, I stopped, uh, it's kind of a sad, sad story. Um, um, I stopped, I, I, I guess I filmed my last mental health news uh, hour about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I re-ran them for a while and I kept planning on doing more and planning on doing more. But the, the, the big reason for doing them passed away. And, uh, oh. oh yeah, oh, oh, I, I adored that woman and mm -hmm. uh, losing her was pretty devastating and um, I I knew that doing the mental health news hour was a was a an important factor in in why I was doing it and and what was motivating me and and, and after she passed away I just like um, kind of it was kind of like going through the motions uh -huh. And uh, I've had so many people tell me that they they wish I was still doing it. They would like it to come back and stuff. And so, so uh, I I'm redoing the news bullets again. Uh -huh. I still have the backdrop. Um, uh, my two sock puppets are still available. Uh, I've got a lot of emotional support from a lot of people to do it. So, so uh, my plan is to do a lot less work because. Those the spinning head brakes, and I think you're gonna uh, yeah, play one. Yeah, they were just looking at it. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 that's why the kitty did the yeah, thing, yeah, and yeah. the head went that okay. way. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of those takes me hours. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a long time because I yeah. have to key frame. I have to make each motion with the cat, and other spinning head brakes that I've done are are very time consuming to do, and then uh, also. Uh, as I talk, there are these little blurbs that come on, little yeah. little kind of jokes and little commentary and stuff, and I have to create those. And each each episode is different. Each one, there's new commentary in it. And I will spend, uh, I have easily spent 24 hours editing one show. Oh, yeah, that's what happens here on, 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 oh, on, on a regular oh. basis. See, the way it appeared that I had to quit my shows because I was, so, I was I've been sick for a long time. And then uh, I was told I couldn't play reruns, which, uh, well, in core presentation. And I, I just couldn't. Uh, so a friend of mine up in Canada, uh, he 
did seven shows for me through Scarecrow Production. And, uh, but it's a sad process when you know you're winding it up. Mm -hmm. And then at the last minute, it was like, sort of, well, you play what you want. And, mm -hmm. and they gave me that second air, so here we are again. But it, 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 you formed this relationship with people that you never met. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's pretty funny because uh, in the store, I don't know if this happened to you, people that have watched your show repeatedly, they just come start talking to you as if they have known you for a while. You have no idea who they are. I met Albert Simpson. Here come a little lady, a little old lady. Well, I'm a little old lady with a walker, and here she comes, and she got in my face, and she said, you're, you're cute as a button in person. She said, I got some for you. <laughs> See, I like alligators, right? Yeah. And she reached in her purse and she had bought me alligator earrings like years ago. And she was just waiting to run into me, you know what I mean? Who are you kidding? Yeah. And the only time I hear from people is when, uh, you might have noticed, I don't show you my phone number anymore. And this is the reason. The show comes on and it says psychic, Lillian, my phone rings. Can you tell me something? Are you really psychic? I said, watch the show, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't put the phone number, but I'm always available. Watch the show and then you call me, you know what I mean? And um, the, the time people call me was, but they call me when either it's not on or it ran on the wrong day or it's, it's a show that, you know, where the dates got mixed up. Mm -hmm. So the only time I hear from them is when something isn't right. So if I don't hear anything, I'm doing okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same here? Yeah, yeah. So so when I start doing my show again, uh, probably I'm going to start, I want to start filming next month. I'm probably just going to do a half hour mm -hmm. and, uh, oh. Light came yeah. on again. It oh, went off. It just went off. It yeah. went off again, yeah. Oh, yeah. look at there. Yeah. So, so I'll do probably a half hour show. I probably won't throw the spinning head brakes in there. I might, mm -hmm. I want to put something in between and uh, just kind of make it a lot simpler and easier so I'm only editing the show for maybe four hours maybe eight hours at the most mm -hmm. at the most and just not have so much detail in it because people it's so funny because half the people watch it for the sock puppets being funny yeah and the other half the people watch it for the information you know what my people watch my show huh Yes, um, we started out uh, real simple, you know, and I didn't want to edit, so I, I tell them we're working very hard on being imperfect. Sometimes we have boobos and sometimes we have things we put in here. Right. And um, so they would actually watch to see what was the booboo and what did we do deliberately. And that's, <laughs> that's how the original, look how dark we got. Um, yeah. th th this was how the original audience got there. And, um, and then he was real TV. I was way ahead of him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so we can kind of dark. You know what? I think maybe we want to... Well, you're still okay. I'm, I'm okay with being here. Can you, uh, can you adjust the lighting scale later, after? Well, I can part the weather. Um, I don't know about the light. <laughs> uh, yes, I do remember you saying that earlier. And I do. I, I film it. I drive. I drive and I'll tell people, when you run into a problem, this is what you do. And then you, you part the weather. And then it rains here and it rains here and it rains behind you. And you're going right under it. And we filmed that. And Bernie wow. used to say, why are you doing this? You're always showing them clouds. Hmm. It was important. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, if we had a little bit less gray outside, I think we'd get a little bit better light. He's going to tell you a story while I'm trying to look about, see about the light. If not, we're moving to higher grounds here. Okay. How's that? Okay. So you try to tell him a story. Well. I am so old. I just don't know. Today, I realized my face has caught up with my body. I got wrinkles in. My eyelids are drooping. Oh, and, oh my oh, God, I'm here. Me. I'm here. <laughs> you and me both. Okay, I'm trying to trying to think of a good story to tell. Uh, oh, I lost your head. Oops, that was a boo boo. All right, we're not editing, so we're leaving it. Okay. Now it's better. 
So tell your story. Um, what would you do without TCTV? Well, um, I have to be creative. I have to have an outlet. I have to have a voice. And uh, there, there was a, a long time where I was uh, writing comments in the Olympian, uh -huh. local newspaper and arguing with people. Uh, I remember that. That's, wh that's where I know your name from. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I commented in it as Danzio. Yeah. And I did this for uh, maybe about a year or so. Uh -huh. but, but it was pretty contentious and people get really cruel to each other. And yeah. Moderator isn't very, doesn't catch everyone and some of the stuff is just crazy. But um, uh, probably right uh, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I would, uh, I don't know. Uh, something, radio. Radio, I've done radio. I've I done a, radio too. Mm -hmm, yeah, I had a radio show, uh, Media Island, uh, at the Coa. It's a little uh -huh. uh, low power FM station. And I did a show uh, called The Nooner. The no oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. You know, the crazy thing is, I was in Tacoma and I did a World Beach show. Uh, through the reggae connection, yeah, and and I didn't realize that that is the station that we play at TCTV. So I guess my voice had been around a lot longer than me. I didn't know it was wow. coming. Yeah, huh? wow. Yeah. Well, I would be I would be involved in some kind of creative endeavor, yeah. uh, one way or another, something or another, and uh, it, something. I have no idea what, but uh, you know, and and. Most of the time, I'm just a silly person, <laughs> laughing, joking, um, um, cracking puns, and so whatever I was doing, whatever I was doing as a living, I would have to be able to. Incorporate that. Yeah, I would have to be in a place where where those parts of me could come out and um, interact that way. Otherwise, I would just be. Nuts. Miserable. Miserable. <laughs> I would be nuts I if know. I didn't have. Yeah. Uh, it, it's very therapeutic too because sometimes uh, uh, instead of not being able to have a voice, you can turn it into a story and get rid of it. Yeah. The, the merger, the merger between Comcast and. Do uh, 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 you think that's going to affect us? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Comcast. Uh, there was some study. I, I, I don't know how accurate they're, what they were telling me is or whatever, but Comcast gets the most complaints of all big, you know, uh, uh, nationwide companies. They get more complaints than anybody else. They're awful as far as complaints go. Yeah. Just, uh, and, and it's the consolidation of the media. It's yeah. like Comcast is the delivery service and NBC is what is being delivered, and uh, I just think it's it's utterly terrible because um, there is all this control over now not only how we get news and information but what's in it. So so uh, I I know I know uh, I can't say one hundred percent, but Keith Olbermann leaving MSNBC yeah. had something to do with that. Yeah. And now that yeah. he's not on the air anymore, he's actually a really funny person. He's a wonderful, I never knew. I like to, him more now that he isn't a newscaster than I did. Yeah, you know. he used to do sports right. broadcasting. Yeah. And so, but is that going to affect the way we address uh, what we say? Are they going to monitor us, you think? Well, what I think is going to happen is uh, this net neutrality thing, and mm -hmm. if you've been following that, uh, what will happen is uh, progressive, uh, humanitarian, um, social justice, grassroots democracy, um, uh, civil liberties, <laughs> all these kinds of things. This, the information will be slowed down. Like, I'll be able to get something high speed that's very conservative and very very right-wing and very, you know, corporate and very, you know, consume, 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 that will be quickly and easily delivered. 
but stuff that has to do with... Oh, so in other words, the, the monitoring from their end. Yeah. Oh, I better smoke fast, huh? It would take me a week to smoke a cigarette and a pay stick. <laughs> <laughs> with the delivery system. Well, you oh. end up saving money, I guess, I suppose. But yeah, that's, that's what it looks like. That's the direction that we're going. And so, fortunately, um, people are innovative and people find things that they like and it's really hard for corporations to do this, uh, uh, what is it, um, supply side economics. Ah. Where you go to the store and you only get five choices. Yeah. Not because that's what consumers want, <laughs> but because that's all the you store want. Like the liquor board. that's what you want. Yeah. Like the liquor board controls what you buy. Yeah. Uh, as we speak, the problem in Egypt is going on. Yeah. Okay, now today is Friday. Now right. on Sunday night, I was talking per computer with a police officer in Cairo. Oh, really? And he was somehow going to the store to buy me some new dresses for the show, and we talked about the family and, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Then I thought he got knocked offline. So I tried to reconnect, and it said, this site is not accessible from the U.S., it's, it, it, but on my end, it came back. But you know, that man didn't even know. I, I'm sure he didn't know something was wrong. But how can they just, I always tell people, make sure that you know your basics because this proof, they can pull your plug any anytime they want to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowhere in Egypt, no one in Egypt has internet right now. Nothing, they yeah. They pulled everything. They've arrested but it, journalists. But it, <laughs> but it started on Sunday night, not on Monday, see? What did the the riots? Uh, no, they knocked people off the internet before the riots. See, because interesting, I didn't know that. I was talking to a police officer, and and he he was telling me he had just guarded the ex president of Mexico, Fox. Uh, he sent me pictures of President Fox and his wife and him. Oh wow! And and then we talking about buying dresses and and doing things, and that was the end of it. That was on Sunday. Well, I knew that th there have been riots in Tunisia, mm -hmm. and uh, things are weird in Tunisia, and, and how that's related to Egypt or, yeah. or Yemen is uh, this. I don't understand why they're rioting in the first place, except uh, yeah, I, yeah, I haven't said anything because I really don't understand that. Yeah, but the point is here: they can pull your plug at any moment. Yeah, yeah. So you have to learn how to work around it. Yeah. Have more than one plug-in. That's it. <laughs> Be plugged in in several several different ways, if you can. Uh, you know. Blip, do you have things on Blip TV? No, no, I haven't created a Blip account, but I will. Uh, Blip, I've noticed, is really interesting. They will be your first maybe dozen things uh -huh. are really nice, and you load them up, and you don't have any problems, and then after that, you start having problems. And then they start offering you, get the platinum account. Oh, I see, yeah. Yes. See, I have 12 shows on MySpace. Only problem is nobody knows how to navigate MySpace anymore. It's changed. So so uh -huh. I'm keeping the account, yeah. you know. But it would be good for the viewer to know that if you look hard enough, you'll find us. Oh, yeah. I mean, Google searches or no. Bing searches or... Uh, uh, Yahoo searches, yeah, yeah. The, Give yeah, me. I've, a, I've looked. I have looked for me <laughs> a number of times. I have nineteen pages. Nineteen pages of me. Really, just different random things all over. Well, yeah. Well, uh, books. You know, I have the four books. Oh. I have the four books on the website, and so you run into all kinds of things. Yeah. So, so how about? I, we, we're probably almost at the end, so on, okay. on YouTube, where are you located? Uh, Dan, you type in Danny for cheeses in YouTube, and that's that's like my channel. And uh -huh. uh, it's also my email address. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, yeah. It, 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 was, it, it was on the clip. If everything else fails, call me or call the station, right? Yeah. 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 I always tell people, call the station. Yeah. I, I, and I gave them authorized me to give out my phone number yeah yeah I had uh, I had done one show uh, how much time do I got um I don't know 
<laughs> Very little. I did. I did a show where I um, said some stuff, and someone came into the station, and they got a copy because I'd signed the contract to allow people to make copies of my stuff, and they grabbed it to copy it so that they could take it to their lawyer to see if if I had said anything that they could sue me for. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I stopped filling out that like, that little checkbox. Oh, I didn't know that. So. Yeah, see, Dennis Kucinich. Dennis Kucinich is going to be in town February the 21st. I heard. Yeah, so. I heard. I'd like to go see him. Yeah, I, well, I heard from him today, uh, you know, that he had, uh, he was suing uh, over the olive pit, and people just went nuts oh, behind yeah. that. But the, they have settled, and it, it, he in detail explained what happened. And I would have made sure Did they pay me too. Crack a tooth or something? Oh, uh, it was a lot more involved. I mean, he had massive surgery because it was the, the tooth had his bridge attached to it, and oh. so he had to remodel his whole mouth. And he didn't want to pay the bill. That's what it was. Ah. Yeah. So. So um. Wow. Yeah, but they, but it but it proved to me I don't care how much, uh, uh fans that we have. First time we need support. Yeah. They go into the next thing, and uh, it's very little loyalty, I think. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I think it it feels that way sometimes, and I think uh, sometimes you just gotta complain a lot more than you want to. <laughs> but most of us are in a situation, uh, like for instance, uh, my RV got vandalized. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the one that I film in, mm -hmm. and so it, it was parked in front of my house, and then I was asked to move it to the back of the house, and that's the buzzer. Well, anyway, you can't complain, and you know why? Because if they say, well, then if you don't like it, move it, they used to that buzzer going off, hon. Just put it between your legs. That'll work. <laughs> there you go, you see? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, ooh, yeah. And so then what happens is, if you complain, then they want you to do something else. So it's easier to be quiet than to stand your ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've also found it's way easier for me to uh, complain on the behalf of someone else than it is for me, which is interesting. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I can go up to bat for somebody else real uh -huh. easy, but. Me, you, so. But you, you know what? I have figured out why that is. Then we have no consequence when we fight for others. Ah. That's why I have trouble filling out my own papers. I can do yours, but I can't do mine. Um, do you think there's a self-esteem issue too? No, it has to do with fear of retaliation. Ah, yeah. Spe back to, uh, it's almost it's time to go okay. now. Okay. But back to where we were saying when we have to escape from things, we always have this bell going off in our head because sometimes the smallest thought has consequences. Yeah, true. True. Yeah. Well, Dan, you'll come back. Yes, I'll be back. We'll do. Uh, we'll do more shows. I right, thank you very much. Now I'm going to swing over here and show you the. It'll be the closing shot. Oh, the good luck thing. There we go. No, here we go. Real, real wiggly. We see you next week. Bye.